Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is the Crypt Shoot and I hope you are well. Damageable actors, or often called destructible actors, are a huge thing. Everything from Fallout to Grand Theft Auto to Tetris all have destructible actors. You can destroy things. An objective pops up, take out the barrels, stuff like that. It's a very common feature. So in today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at adding a generic destructible system into our game. So let's get started. So last tutorial, we created this little, um, this little damage test system where when you walk up to it and press the button, it just calls the any damage event here. And the aspects that we're going to is kind of similar to that, but the difference is we, we won't have to implement this any damage system to every single actor we want. So we want, say, barrels, we want NPCs, uh, wagons, anything. This system we're going to create, you literally go to the system, add a couple of things, and that's it. The system's now destructible. It's that simple. So to get started, I'm going to go into my content drawer, and inside my blueprints folder, I'm going to right-click and create a new folder called Components. And inside here, I'm going to right-click, Blueprint class, and I'm going to select Actor Component. And the reason we're selecting Actor Component, so it means we can drag this component onto any actor we want to act as a destructible system. But this destruction system will also manage the actor's health and stuff like that. So I'm going to come and call mine AC Damage System, and I'm going to open it up. So I'm going to come and delete these two events off right away because we don't need them. And I'm going to come and start creating our health. So the first health I'm going to create is our current health here. And I'm going to set it to a float variable. I'm going to make sure the eyeball is visible so we can edit it from the editor if we need to. And I'm going to add another variable called max health. And I'm going to make sure that's a float and eyeball picked as well. One slight modification I'm going to do as well is I'm just going to add a new variable for is invincible. It'll be a type of boolean and I'll make sure the eyeball is visible as well. This is a very common type of variable you'll see around. Because in if you have an NPC that is normally damageable, but in this one instance, for example, you need them to not be able to die then you can just tick is invincible and then they can't die or if you want a blockade of barrels that you can only access after a specific quest you can mark them as is invincible and then set something up to turn them off afterwards so instead of just setting them to a huge health where after time you know gamers will get to it is invincible will just prevent that full stop and now that we've done that let's come and create a new function called damage taken and this is going to take three inputs the first input is going to be the amount of damage taken and that'll be a float so i'm going to call it damage amount and it'll be a type of float the next will be the type of damage you're going to take and at the moment we're not going to use this hugely but in the future it can be very very useful and i'm going to search for damage type which is a type already built into unreal and the final input i'm going to add is a type of actor called the damage causer and this is going to tell you who caused this damage to the actor so if it's another npc or an explosion they'll know how to react accordingly later it's useful information to have and i'm going to set it to a type of actor so the first thing we're going to do when damage is taken is we're actually going to check if we need to apply any damage at all so if they're already dead for example, say they're playing the death animation or something like that, then we don't need to apply any more damage. So I'm going to drag off the current health and apply it. Then I'm going to go is more than zero. But this is where we're also going to build in our is invincible. So I'm going to drag off of this and do and. And then drag in our is invincible and just drag in a not boolean. And we're going to say if they've got health and they're not invincible, then we can add our branch and say, okay, now we can proceed with applying damage to them. So if we are allowed to damage them, we're gonna take the current health and we're gonna minus the damage amount from them by just doing get damage amount. And this is a, just a little shortcut to this variable here instead of dragging it all out and causing a mess. So once we've removed that, we can now come and reset the current health back to the new value from the true. If it's false, we're just gonna not do anything. We don't need to. Then we check on this new value is it less than zero? So have they just died? So if they have just died, this is where we'll call our systems death functionality. But if they haven't just died, then this is where we call the damage taken. So the difference is death, you'll be fall over, you'll ragged or whatever. The false, so the damage taken, you'll scream in pain or something, you know, something like that, or you'll respond to them, acknowledge their presence. So in order to do this, we now need to start communicating with the actor who owns our damage system. So I'm going to come into my interfaces folder here, 
and I'm going to right click and I'm going to do blueprint blueprint interface and I'm going to call it BPI damageable and I'm going to open this up the first function I'm going to add is the death function this function will handle telling our actor you've died play your death functionality whatever that may be with a barrel it'll break into pieces with an NPC they'll ragdoll that kind of thing and we don't need any parameter stacks so we're just saying straight die the next function I'll add is the damage taken function and this is going to take our three inputs from previous so it'll be our damage amount and that'll be a type of float this gives you the ability to say if the damage is more than a thousand you know and it's type of fire just turn straight into a skeleton kind of thing or it gives you some other functionality like that to make them block correctly or try to do something next will be the damage type again and this will be the built-in unreal damage type Again, this will allow you to react to poison or fire or, you know, other stuff if you want to. And then finally, I will add the damage causer. This is useful if you've got AI built into it, because then you can make the AI see, hey, I've not discovered this player is attacking me, attack this player. Whereas a barrel, you can just straight ignore it, unless it's like a sentient barrel or something. And now you can just compile and save. So now that our actor component has an interface joined with it, from the true, we can just simply right click and do get owner. And this is going to get the owner of the component. So as you can see on the hover, follow the outer chain to get the actor that owns this component. So the actor who this component is sitting on. And I'm going to drag off and I'm just going to call death, just like that. And then from our get owner, we can just do damage taken. And we'll use the message here from the BPI damageable. And I'm going to connect it up. And now we can just plug in our three variables from the beginning. So I'm just going to drag off the damage amount and do get damage amount, get damage type, and finally get damage cause, just like so. And now we can hit compile and save. And for the majority of it, that's the system pretty much done. It's really, really small. And you'll notice we're not playing any animations or any ragdoll or anything. And that's because this is a generic damage system. So we can plug this in later. So one quick helper function I'm going to create anyway is something that is useful, but I don't think we're necessarily going to use in this tutorial. But it's useful for checking objectives and stuff like that is the is alive function. And all this is, is a function that's literally just going to return whether or not this NPC is alive or not. So I'm going to add an output to it of a boolean called alive, like so. And this is literally going to return if the current health is more than zero. And then I'm going to drag off of this and do or, and I'm going to stick the invincible on and plug it in and then connect this to the output. So whenever you call this function, it will literally say if they've got health or they're invincible, then they're alive. So you can call it from any way you want as long as they've got a damage that system. So it's really, really useful. So one last thing we're going to add to our damage system, which is going to be useful for outside actors being made aware when something is destroyed. We're going to add two event dispatchers onto our damage system. The first one is going to be on death. And the second one is going to be on damage taken. And we're just going to drag the on death after the death and call it just like so. And then we're going to also do the same on, on damage taken like so. Now you might be wondering why have we got our two interface calls to damage taken and death. And then we're also calling a delegate. And the difference is the interface is talking to our owner. So our NPC, our barrels and saying you have died or you have taken damage, which is fine. Whereas our delegates are for telling outside actors. So our quest or objectives or their NPCs that are in your faction so for example you might have a guard a group of bandits you'll have a leader bandit and four extra bandits and those four extra bandits will connect to the on death of the leader bandit and then if the leader dies first then the other bandits will be told run away your leader's died kind of thing dismantle or you might have somebody tied to it so if you destroy something that like, they might try to attack you and it's really really useful for late for like quests and objectives and dialogue and stuff like that so it's just really, really quick to add and it's useful if you ever need it. So the final reusable thing we're going to do on, on our damage system is we actually need to implement this damage taken when they have damage taken. Now, normally in Unreal, you would apply the event, any damage and tell it to destroy the actor, which is OK. It works. 
but we're wanting to make this reusable. We don't want to have to do this every single time. It's a step you can miss and then your system won't work. So instead, what we're going to do is come back to our event graph up here and I'm going to add our begin play onto it. And I'm going to right click and do get owner, which is going to get the owner of the act component that we discussed earlier. And I'm going to drag off here and I'm going to do assign on take any damage. If you want to do specific damages, you can pick the other ones. I'm just going to say any damage you take, plug into this. And just like we set up the on death and on damage taken, we're plugging into one of Unreal's default delegates for when they take damage and we're taking over it here. So we're saying when they take damage of any kind, we're going to plug into it and call our damage taken function just like that. And you'll see we can plug in the damage to the damage amount, the damage type to the damage type and the damage caused to the damage caused. If you want the instigator by as well, you can add it into it. I don't typically use it. And now we can hit compile and save. So now in theory, any actor we add this AC damage system to and then the interface to tell them how to die and stuff will now work. So I'm going to come back over to my damage test here, which is literally just a barrel with an event graph that is now empty. That's it. That's all it does. And it also has collision on it, which I'm just going to highlight here, block or dynamic. So we can actually tell when it's hit. So how do we use our new component? So in the components here, I'm just going to come up and add damage system. So add our new damage system. I'm going to click it and give it some health. So we'll say it has 10 health, 10 max health, and it's not invincible. And then the finally, I'm going to come to class settings and I'm going to go implemented interfaces, BPI, damageable. And you'll see down here we'll have two interfaces. So I'm going to double click both to implement them like so. So on death, I have a couple of barrel breaking sounds. Here we go. So I have some barrel breaking sounds that I'm just going to act out when a barrel's broken. I'm going to highlight them all, right click and do create single queue, which is going to create this sound queue here. Now, if you open it up, all it's done is just randomized between which one to play. This gives it a lot more variety, so the sound's not generic all the time. So in this specific barrel's case, I'm just going to come and add an audio actor here, just like so. And then I'm going to drag the audio in. I will set the sound to our new sound wood break. This is where we're going to do it slightly different. I'm going to use the delegate of on audio finish. I'm going to say when the audio finishes playing, destroy the actor. So that'll destroy this barrel. And then finally, I'm just going to tell the audio to actually play. And the reason we're using a delegate instead of a delay is all these sounds that I'm using are different lengths. Some of them are like 0.2 seconds, some of them are like 0 0.5, 0 0.7. What do you set your delay to? You, you can't, it's in a random queue. Whereas if you bind to the finished, then as soon as the, any audio finishes, whether it's 2 minutes, 10 minutes, or half a second, it will play it and it'll destroy it. So that's my death function for this barrel. And then on the barrel damage taken, I'm actually going to come and copy relatively the same thing, but I don't need the on finish because I don't need to know when it's finished. And then, and then I'm just going to simply apply my sound directly to it. I did notice that my original sound had like 10 sounds in one that wasn't working. So I have to split it up and read on it. And now with that, we can just wrap this in a comment saying damage. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. So one last thing we need to just fix on our damage system is this node right here, where after we've checked if the health or they're invincible and we subtract their health, instead of just checking more, less than zero, we need to check if it's less than or equal to zero. Otherwise, if you damage them directly on zero, it won't act as death, it will act as damage and it won't work properly. So we're just gonna hit compile and save. And now with that, we should be able to come and destroy these barrels. So if we click on them and check they've got the damage system, they're set to 30 in this case, that's fine. So we can click. And with that, if I walk up to these barrels and punch it, it plays the barrel break, barrel hit sound. If I do it again, okay, some of them have destroyed. There we go. So it doesn't look ultra clean, but with some particles, some chaos destruction effects, it can look really, really good and it can mask the hit. So maybe when you punch it, maybe you make it shake a little or do some particle damage off. The sky's the limit with what you want to do. So this one's clearly got bigger health. There we go, that will now destroy. And you can see it's completely gone. How cool is that, ladies and gentlemen? It's super, super easy to add. So let's do it again. So NPCs, they're common. We damage them quite often. So I'm going to click on this guy and I'm going to open him up to my ALS NPC. So this is just a normal type of a character. I'm using an ALS character, but it's just a character. And then you can walk up. They've got collision. You can talk to them, stuff like that. So let's make it so we can damage them. So in four steps, we can make it so we can now damage them. So step one, let's add the component. I'll give it some health. I'll say 50-50. There we go. Step two, add the interface. 
So uh, my interface will be BPI damageable. Step three will be implement the two interfaces, damage taken and death. But in this case, what I'm going to do is actually cut these and create a new event graph called damage just to keep them separate and all organized and step four is to populate these functions so let's say on damage taken i don't actually have anything for the npcs yet so i'll just print out saying hey that hurts and then for the death let's do it a little bit cool so we'll say we'll grab the movement component and we'll say stop movement immediately so if they're currently chasing you or they're walking around they'll, they'll stop in place i'll also grab the character movement system and i will drag up and say set move movement mode to none so they physically can't move anymore so if they try to keep moving after this i will drag in the mesh because i'm going to make them ragdoll so drag in the mesh and i'll drag this up and say set collision profile name and i'll type capital r ragdoll just like that and connect it up then i will drag from the mesh again and i will do set simulate physics which will tell it to start simulating physics on all the colliders so that will activate the ragdoll and make them fall over and then the final thing is i'll grab the capsule component and i'll do set collision enabled and i'll set it to no collision so this will basically make them ragdoll it will hide the capsule component so you can no longer walk into it and stop them moving. But we still need them to destroy the actor because if you kill them and keep all the bodies in there, it'll start to lag eventually. So from here, I'm just going to drag off and do set timer by function name. Because if we just do destroy, then you won't see the ragdoll. They'll just destroy quickly. So the function name I will call death expired and the time I will set to something like 10 seconds. You could easily random this and check when the character's not looking at them anymore or something like that. I'm just going to set it to 10 seconds for mine. And then I'm going to come and create a new function called death expired. And then simply from this, I'm just going to call destroy actor and I'll hit compile and save. And now with those four easy steps and the customization you need to do, all our NPCs are now destructible. You can walk up to them and cause damage. You'll see if I walk over and hit him, He'll say, hey, that hurts. Perfect. So if I hit him a couple more times, oh, and there he's ragdolled and fold over just like that. And of course, you can customize this however you want it to work. So if we just wait for 10 seconds, you will see that he will disappear. Perfect. However, that's not fantastic because this guy's a main quest giver. We don't want him to die just yet. So I'm just going to come and tick his invincible flag. And then in theory now, we can attack him all we want, he will never die. So you can see if we walk up to him, if I attack him multiple times, he won't even say, hey, that hurts. This guy is completely invincible, which is good because he's a main quest giver, I don't want him to die. Perfect. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen, a super, super easy, damageable system. It's highly customizable. You just do four simple steps, drop the component on, drop the interface, implement the functions, customize the functions, and that's it super super easy and as an added bonus you also have the is alive function if you need to check it it's useful when running ai stuff because then when you're targeting an enemy you can look at them and then before you set them as your active target you just call is alive and it'll tell you are they alive no point targeting them if they're dead anyway unless you're going to loot them obviously and that's it ladies and gentlemen there is our super simple and flexible damage system so thank you for watching how would you improve this damage system would you do anything different thanks for watching my name is decryption and i will see you next time